Yu Jin, courtesy name Wenzhe, was a Chinese military general serving under the warlord Cao Cao in the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China. He joined Cao Cao in 192 around the start of the civil wars leading to the collapse of the dynasty, and fought in many of the campaigns which established the warlord's position as a central figure in that period. In 219, Yu Jin was tasked with leading forces to relieve Cao Cao's general Cao Ren, who was being besieged in Fancheng by Liu Bei's general Guan Yu, but his armies were destroyed in a flood due to heavy rains. Yu Jin surrendered to Guan Yu and became a prisoner of war, but was transferred to the custody of another warlord, Sun Quan, after Sun Quan's forces captured Guan Yu's bases in late 219. Sun Quan treated Yu Jin like a guest and in 221 sent him back to the state of Cao Wei, which was founded in late 220 by Cao Cao's successor, Cao Pai, who ended the Eastern Han Dynasty. Cao Pai pardoned Yu Jin and restored him to the position of a general. However, Yu Jin died later that year in regret after visiting Cao Cao's tomb, where he saw illustrations of the Battle of Fancheng depicting his surrender to Guanyu. Chen Shu, who wrote the 3rd century historical text Sanguozi, named Yu Jin as one of the five elite generals of his time, alongside Zhang He, Yu Wei Jin, Zhang Liao, and Xu Huang. Yu Jin was born in Juping County, Taishan Commandery, which is in present day Taian, Shandong, in the late Eastern Han Dynasty. In the early 180s, when the Yellow Turban Rebellion broke out, Yu Jin responded to the Han government's call for volunteers to serve in the Imperial Army and help to suppress the revolt. He became a subordinate of the General Bao Xin, who was based in Yan Province. In 192, after the warlord Cao Cao took charge of Yan Province, Yu Jin and his fellow volunteers were appointed as dubos and placed under the command of Wang Lang. Wang Lang felt that Yu Jin was extraordinary and had the potential to become a great general, so he recommended Yu Jin to Cao Cao. Cao Cao commissioned Yu Jin as a major after interviewing him, and then sent him to attack Guangwei, a location in Shu province, which was governed by Tao Qian. Yu Jin successfully conquered Guangwei and was promoted to commandant who breaks formations. Between 194 and 195, Yu Jin fought on Cao Cao's side in a war against a rival warlord Lu Bu for control over Yan province. He destroyed two of Lu Bu's camps at the south of the city during a battle in Puyong while his subordinates defeated Gao Ye, one of Lu Bu's officers, at Xuchang. Yu Jin later attacked Lu Bu's strongholds at Chushang, Yingtao and Lihu counties, and captured all of them. He also besieged Zhang Zhao at Yongkuayu and conquered the county. Around 196, Yu Jin joined Cao Cao in a campaign against remnants of the Yellow Turban rebels led by Lu Pai, Huang Shao and others. They garrisoned at Banyang. One night, Huang Shao and the rebels attempted to launch a surprise attack on Cao Cao's camp, but were defeated by Yu Jin and his subordinates. Lu Pai, Huang Shao and the rebel leaders were killed and the remaining rebels surrendered. Yu Jin was promoted to colonel who pacifies the barbarians. In 197, Yu Jin besieged Chao Rui, an officer serving under a rival warlord Yuan Shu, at Ku County and killed Chao Rui and four other enemy officers. In 197, Yu Jin accompanied Cao Cao on a campaign against the warlord Zhang Shu in Wancheng. Zhang Shu initially surrendered and pledged allegiance to Cao Cao, but rebelled later and defeated Cao Cao in a surprise attack. There was chaos and disorder in Cao Cao's forces as they retreated to Vuyan County. Only Yu Jin led his unit to continue fighting the pursuing enemy while maintaining an orderly retreat to Vuyan County. They managed to stay together even though they had sustained many casualties and losses. When Zhang Shu's forces slowed down on their pursuit, Yu Jin reorganized his men and led them towards Vu Yin County in a dignified manner even though they had lost the battle. Before reaching Cao Cao's position, Yu Jin encountered about a dozen injured and naked men on the road. When he asked them what happened, they told him that they were robbed by the Kuangzhou Corps. Yu Jin turned furious and said, The Kuangzhou Corps are part of Lord Cao's army. How dare they become robbers? He then led his men to attack and punish them. Some of the Kuangzhou soldiers escaped to Vuyan County and accused Yu Jin of committing the crimes they were responsible for. When Yu Jin reached Vuyan County, he immediately set up defensive fortifications around the camp instead of reporting directly to Cao Cao. His subordinates told him, the Kuangzhou soldiers framed you. You should explain matters to Lord Cao as soon as possible. Yu Jin replied, the enemy is still in pursuit and may reach here any time. If we don't set up defenses now. How can we expect to hold them off? Lord Cao is intelligent and wise. Those accusations aren't a cause for concern. After the defenses were set up, 
Yu Jin went to meet Cao Cao and explained everything. Cao Cao felt pleased and he said, how dangerous it was for me when we were defeated at the Yu River. General, you're able to bring order to chaos and hold your ground against a fierce enemy, and you display unwavering loyalty. Even the famous generals of ancient times couldn't have done better than you. Yu Jin was awarded the title Marquis of Yuzu Village in recognition of his contributions. In 198, Yu Jin followed Cao Cao on another campaign against Zhang Shu at Rang County. He also participated in the Battle of Shapi against Lu Bu, which resulted in Lu Bu's defeat and execution. Later, he joined Shi Huan and Cao Ren in defeating Suai Gu at Shekwan County. In early 200, when war broke out between Cao Cao and his northern rival Yuan Shao, with the latter initially having the upper hand, Yu Jin volunteered to lead the vanguard to engage Yuan Shao's forces. Cao Cao was impressed with Yu Jin's courage, so he placed Yu Jin in command of 2,000 infantry and cavalry and ordered him to defend Yan Fort, in present-day Yanjin County. Hanan, from the enemy, while he personally led another army to Guandu. Around the time, the warlord Liu Bei seized control of Shu province after killing Che Zhou, the provincial governor whom Cao Cao had appointed. Cao Cao then led his forces to attack Liu Bei. Yuan Shao concurrently attacked Yan Fort, but Yu Jin managed to hold his position. Later, Yu Jin and Yue Jin led 5,000 infantry and cavalry to attack Yuan Shao's camps along the Yellow River southwest of Yan Fort. They traveled to as far as Ji and Ho Jia counties. They set fire to over 30 enemy camps, killed or captured thousands of enemy soldiers, and forced over 20 of Yuan Shao's officers, including He Mao and Wang Mo, into surrendering. Cao Cao then ordered Yu Jin to garrison at Yuan Wu County. Yu Jin attacked and destroyed Yuan Shao's camp at Dushi Fort. Yu Jin was promoted to Major General for his achievement and was then relocated to Cao Cao's camp at Guandu. During the Battle of Guandu, Yuan Shao's forces piled up earth to form small hills and constructed platforms on top for their archers, who rained arrows on Cao Cao's camp. Cao Cao's forces sustained many casualties and the soldiers were all fearful. Yu Jin firmly defended his positions, fought bravely, and displayed great fervor. He was promoted to lieutenant general after Cao Cao scored a decisive victory over Yuan Shao at Guandu. Cao Cao continued waging wars against Yuan Shao after the Battle of Guandu and against Yuan Shao's heirs and allies after Yuan Shao died in 202. By 206, after he had seized control of Ji province from the Yuans, a minor warlord Chang Zai who had initially surrendered to him in early 201 rebelled against him. Cao Cao ordered Yu Jin to lead an army to attack Chang Zai. Chang Zai surrendered to Yu Jin, who was an old friend of his. When his subordinates suggested that he send Chang Zai as a prisoner of war to Cao Cao and let Cao Cao decide Chang Shi's fate, Yu Jin said, aren't you all aware of the norms established? By Lord Cao? He doesn't spare those who surrender after they are surrounded. I should follow his norms and uphold law and order. Chang Zai may be an old friend of mine. But I won't break the norms because of this. He personally supervised Chang Shi's execution and shed tears as he gave the order. When Cao Cao heard about it, he remarked, Is it heaven's will that Chang Zai had his fate decided by Yu Jin instead of me? He regarded Yu Jin more highly than before after this incident. Yu Jin was promoted to General of Tiger's Might for his efforts in pacifying Chang Shi's revolt. In 209, after the Battle of Red Cliffs, Chen Lan and Mei Cheng started a rebellion in Lu County. Cao Cao sent two separate forces to suppress the rebellion, Yu Jin and Zhang Ba to attack Mei Cheng, Zhang Liao, with Zhang He and Yu Gai as his deputies, to attack Chen Lan. Mei Cheng and his followers, who numbered about 3,000, surrendered when Yu Jin and Zhang Ba showed up. However, after Yu Jin and Zhang Ba left, Mei Cheng rebelled again and led his men to join Chen Lan. Zhang Liao led his army to attack the rebels, but was running short of supplies, so Yu Jin headed back and oversaw the transporting of supplies to the front line to support Zhang Liao. Zhang Liao successfully suppressed the revolt and killed the two rebel leaders. In recognition of his contributions during the campaign, Yu Jin was awarded an additional 200 taxable households in his marquisate, making it 1,200 households in total. Later, he was promoted to general of the left and granted imperial authority. One of his sons was awarded a marquis title and given 500 households in his marquisate. In 219, when Cao Cao was in Chang'an, he gave orders to his general Cao Ren to attack Liu Bei's general Guan Yu at Fancheng. He also instructed Yu Jin to lead forces to support Cao Ren. 
It was in autumn at the time and there were heavy rains. The Han River overflowed and flooded the neighboring flatlands. The water level reached as high as several Zhang. Yujin's seven armies were destroyed in the flood, while Yujin himself and his remaining men managed to escape to high ground and were trapped there. Guan Yu led naval troops to attack Yujin. Yujin surrendered to Guan Yu, but his subordinate Pang to put up fierce resistance and ended up being captured and executed by Guan Yu when he refused to surrender. When Cao Cao received news of Yujin's surrender, he mourned Pang to's death for a long time and said, I've known Yujin for 30 years, yet the behavior he displayed in the face of danger was no better than the displayed. By Pang Da. Yujin remained as a prisoner of war in Guan Yu's base in Jing province until late 219, when Lu Bei's territories in the province were captured by Sun Quan's general Lu Meng in a stealth invasion. Guan Yu was captured and executed by Sun Quan's forces. Yujin was released and brought to Wu, where he was treated like a guest. However, he was also ridiculed and humiliated by Yu Fan, an official serving under Sun Quan. Cao Cao died in March 220 and was succeeded by his son Cao Pai. Later that year, Cao Pai ended the Eastern Han Dynasty and established the state of Cao Wei with him as its first emperor. Sun Quan pledged allegiance to Cao Pai in 221 and sent Yu Jin back to Wei in autumn. By then, Yu Jin was a pallid looking old man with a head full of gray hair. He knelt down, Kowtowed and cried when he met Cao Pai. Cao Pai comforted him, told him about Shun Linfu and Ming Mingxi, and then commissioned him as general who stabilizes distant lands. Cao Pai wanted to send Yu Jin as his personal representative to meet Sun Quan. Before Yu Jin left, Cao Pai ordered him to visit Cao Cao's tomb at Jailing in Yi. There, Yu Jin saw illustrations of the Battle of Fancheng, in which he was depicted surrendering to Guan Yu, while Pang De was portrayed in a ferocious and courageous manner. He was so filled with regret that he fell ill, and then died. Cao Pai granted him the posthumous title Marquis Li, which literally means severe Marquis. Yu Jin's son, Yu Gui, inherited his father's title Marquis of Yizu village. Yu Jin probably had at least one other son, who received a Marquis title and 500 households in his Marquisate. Chen Shu, who wrote Yu Jin's biography in the records of the Three Kingdoms, named Yu one of the five elite generals of his time, alongside Zhang Liao. Yu Wei Jin, Zhang He, and Xu Huang. He mentioned that when Cao Cao went to war, these five generals were usually in command of either the vanguard or the rearguard. Yu Jin was known for maintaining high standards of discipline in his unit and for never keeping the spoils of war for himself. As such, he was often awarded a large share of rewards after battles. However, he was very unpopular with his men because he was harsh and unforgiving in enforcing rules and regulations. Cao Cao disliked Zhu Ling, one of his generals, and had the intention of removing him from his position. He knew that Yu Jin had an intimidating presence so he ordered Yu Jin to take control of Zhu Ling's unit. Zhu Ling and his men did not dare to move when Yu Jin showed up at their camp and took over Zhu Ling's command. Zhu Ling then became Yu Jin's subordinate and all his men obediently submitted to Yu Jin's command. Such was Yu Jin's ability to strike fear into the hearts of others. Pei Songji, who annotated Yu Jin's biography in the Sangwazi, commented that even though Yu Jin followed the book when he executed Chang Zai, he had another option, send Chang Zai as a prisoner of war to Cao Cao and let his lord decide Chang Shi's fate, that was still not considered a violation of the norms. Pei Songji felt that Yu Jin deserved his eventual fate, ending up as a prisoner of war and receiving a negative-sounding posthumous title after death, because he was unwilling to make an exception for an old friend, was inclined towards killing and was harsh in suppressing dissent. The Song Dynasty poet Kong Pingjong wrote a poem General Yu describing Yu Jin's life, Dot Chang'an sends an army of indomitable champions, what resolve does the king of Hanjong have? Dot the seven armies have hearts of fierce falcons, if tigers and rhinos have feathers put on them. They would soar high. Dot they look with such disdain upon Jing and Yi that they would conquer them with sweeping force, but the walls of Beta Cheng make for a high barrier. Dot they feed their horses and have breakfast while eagerly waiting to go to battle at daybreak, but thunder booms over the mountains. Dot the overcast sky releases a heavy and bitter downpour lasting over ten days, the Han River floods and waves crash overhead. Dot in a flurried panic, there is no time to regroup the troops, in the frenzy over half of them are trampled to death. Dot when you run out of ideas, would you not want to flee? Yet, looking around, everything is as vast as the sea. Dot even the turtles cry and the fish leap about in fright, if the enemy shows up, who would dare fight them? 
Dot from the distance a large ship carrying banners and drums approaches, you hear it is Guan Yunchang. Dot the Mingshang heads straight to the base of the embankment, in it are crossbows and bows of unparalleled might. Dot even if you have elite cavalry, what use would they be? The white wave crests billow into the sky like galloping horses. Dot the general surrenders without resistance and gets tied up, silent in shame, his face turns a deep ochre. Dot the report of victory takes only a day to reach the shining city, not even a will turned back as they all headed west. Dot long ago, the general betrayed a friend, or else Chang's eye would still be alive. Dot although divine retribution is the will of heaven, all heroic men nonetheless hold their reputations dear. Dot cow man's dear companion of thirty years, when put into a desperate situation, he cannot even be as loyal and virtuous as Pang. Dot he returns with white hair, withered with exhaustion, his weeping and kowtowing is a pitiful sight to behold. Dot how deceitful and humiliating is that painting at jailing, with shame and sorrow it sends him to the Nine Springs. Dot at the U River he showed peerless valor, a hero's success or failure is all a matter of circumstances. Thanks for watching.